head home after a long day at work, fire up your computer, you're ready for a long evening of well-earned and largely meaningless web surfing, until you see a terse message that says, all your files have been encrypted. All your documents, photos, videos, and databases are unaccessible. Suddenly your heart starts to beat a little fast. Your head starts to spin. You realize something is very, very wrong. You start to think like most human beings, wait a second, this is supposed to happen to other people, not to me. Now that I've got your attention, uh, I'm John Dixon. I'm a cybersecurity professional. And for the last 20 years, I've been helping uh, really large companies protect themselves from the attacks of a, of a rogues gallery of hackers and black operatives and all these bad guys. And what I've learned over the last 20 years is that even at this point, after all the headlines, we still struggle as individuals, as individual users, to protect ourselves. This thus was the case last May, May uh, 2017, when the WannaCry ransomware attack occurred across the world. About 230,000 computers and about 150 countries were locked up. Many of you know about this. After about a week, we kind of whistled through the graveyard, and most of our clients were OK. We were good. At the end of the week, I get a call from my parents. They said, hey, could you come over after work? I think we've got a problem. And sure enough, they got hit. That was the bad news. Good news is I went over there and spent the whole evening with them. They had backed up everything, so it wasn't catastrophic. But as our evening wound down, my mom asked me a question. She said, what could we have reasonably done to protect ourselves? You see, my mom's a, a lay person, a civilian, so to speak. She's not an IT person. She's not a security person. She has no idea about the behind-the-scenes titanic struggles between the black hat attackers and the white hat defenders. Her question really gnawed on me for a long time, and it brought up a bigger question, which was how could regular users reasonably protect themselves against increasingly sophisticated cybersecurity attacks. The problem is, really, it starts with us, right? Here's a truism. The attackers, the hackers, so to speak, they know that if they exhaust all their technical means, they will go after the weakest link. That's us. That's the users. That means that before you fix the internet, before we fix the web, before we do all the technical stuff and about behind the scenes, We've got to fix our own behaviors online. And to that end, I'd like to introduce you to this concept of what I call the resilient user. The resilient user is an individual who through, implements a series of habits, a series of, of practices online that make themselves less susceptible to hacking. It's very simple. That means a series of technical means, like protecting themselves by making sure their systems are updated, that could also mean uh, being much more mindful online because many of the behaviors that they have, many of the actions actually put themselves in a bad position. And then finally, that can mean for individuals to protect their private information and, and guard it jealously because guess what attackers do? They use that private information against us to craft their attacks. So that's the challenge. Before we go into it, uh, let me just say, uh, get us uh, a, a, a hands up to see how many people saw the free underscore TEDx underscore wireless that was out there. A few of y'all. Um, that was this guy, for the record. Uh, that, this is the Wi-Fi pineapple. What the Wi-Fi pineapple is, is a, I'll use the term, oddity device. Uh, what it does is it does some pretty cool things. It sets itself up as a wireless access point, or a rogue or fake wireless access point, and will do things like look at all the traffic that you have going through after you connect to the internet. You know what else it does? It will sit there and watch all your traffic and log it. It will also look at all the other wireless access points you've attached to and download all the credentials for those, all the usernames and passwords of all the other wireless access points you've done. So the key point here is, 
people looking for wireless internet will hop on these things mindlessly and put themselves into a very difficult position. So what I'd ask you to do is to really think about and, and steal a concept from the physical world. I've been struggling about this. How do, you, how do you get regular users to stop doing these things? And I really latched on a term, uh, an idea around defensive driving. Because defensive driving is something we all understand. We all understand the two-second rule about putting yourself and putting a cushion between you and the, the driver in front of you. You understand not to put yourselves in risky positions. And you largely put yourself in dangerous environments and survive those dangerous environments every day. I thought about that when I drove from Denver to Vail two days ago, <laughs> for example. With, so, so I can't think of a more fitting metaphor for the online world. So we've got to pull those concepts and start to make those habits as users to become much more resilient. So let me talk to you about the resilient user and what that means, becoming a resilient user. First of all, I talked about technical means. What I mean by that simply is you need to be obsessive like I am about updates. You need, when you see those little updates that come on your iPhone or on your computer, yes, a few of those are feature requests, are new features. Most of them these days are security patches. It's those patches that not applied put you at a weakness and allow attackers to come in and uh, exploit your systems. I mean, none of us would jump on the road knowing full well that the brakes were pretty shaky. I sure as heck wouldn't do that drive again if I knew my brakes were shaky. I wouldn't drive at night if my taillights didn't work. But somehow, many of us will hop on the internet if they haven't updated their Windows computer. And that is the, almost the exact same metaphor, is you're putting yourselves at risk to the latest malware and the latest uh, attacks that are out there. You're putting yourself at a structural disadvantage. The second thing I would throw out there is backing up. Can you think of a more unsexy topic these days than backing up your stuff? But guess what? If it weren't for the backing up, my parents would have lost everything. And with ransomware getting much more sophisticated, much more pervasive, if you have everything backed up online or some other means, that type of event is not catastrophic. So the second concept I want to throw in there is this one of mindfulness. What I mean by mindfulness is really uh, the pregnant pause, the, the consciousness of when you're online. Uh, you know, being a little bit of paranoid, which I know is an antithesis to this conference, but to, be, to, to maybe say no, uh, to, the, to say no to that link that your friend sent you. Uh, but what I mean is a level of thought, that, an approach to the way you conduct yourselves online, because again, the attackers know if they can't get you technically, they will come after you, and they are incredibly smart these days. So things like trusting your intuition. If something looks fishy or looks bad, it probably is. Absolutely, it probably is. So it's okay to say no in this instance. The other thing I would throw out there is really around pro protecting your private information. You wouldn't believe how much stuff is out there. I don't know how many people have done an audit of their online profile and the things that are out there on LinkedIn, Facebook, and other sites. But we had a client several years back who uh, used a private bit of information for all of his domain registries, so all of his website domains. And it was his favorite vacation spot was the secret uh, that the uh, GoDaddy had and everybody else had. And sure enough, the attackers just kind of did a little bit of research and called back in and said, favorite vacation spot. Oh, it's San Diego. And they rerouted all of their websites to a neo-Nazi site, I think it was, at the time. That's not really hacking. That's just really not being mindful and, and not protecting the private data. So here's a bit of uh, advice. You know all those shared secrets you have to do for banks and stuff like that? You don't have to tell the truth. <laughs> so my first girlfriend, think about that. My first girlfriend was Marilyn Monroe. Uh, my first car was a Lamborghini. Uh, and so you start to think that way. Uh, I mean, you don't have to put down the actual answers uh, that are true that people can research. So, you, so, again, a mindset change here, right? So let me just wrap up really quickly and say a couple of things. First of all, 
if you read the headlines, you could, get the, you could perceive that, that we're losing this battle, right? And there's some good days and bad days. Uh, every day there seems to be another breach story. But I would argue that as individuals, that if you apply some of these con concepts of resilience, you will change the balance of power between the attackers and the attacked. If you, if you really implement and become obsessive about those updates, if you really are much more mindful about what you do online, and if you guard your private data very preciously, you'll make it harder for the attackers to do their job. It'll make it harder for them to steal information, to steal your data, to steal your money. And I think that'll make the, the world a better place. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. You can hug me.